Call of Duty by Jason Reynolds. Bryson Wills didn't go to school today. His mother let him stay home, not because of all the pain in his face, the black eye, the busted lip, the swollen jaw, the scrapes, but because she figured it was a good idea to let things cool off, to put some space between him and what happened, to let the situation breathe. Before she left the house, she told Bryson a bunch of things, that she loved him, was proud of him, but most importantly, that he shouldn't play video games all day. Bryson's father came in his room, after his mom, and told him the same things, minus the part about the video games. Love you, Bry, his dad said, kissing him on the cheek over and over again, like he did every morning, until Bryson grunted something that his father translated as, I love you too. Then Bryson rolled over, his plush mattress suddenly prickling like a bed of nails against his bruised body. A few hours later, Bryson was awake, standing, yawning, stretching, all of which felt like he was pulling himself apart. He eased down the hall into the kitchen, microwaved a bowl of oatmeal, poured a glass of apple juice, then sat in front of the TV, where, even though his mother said not to, he planned to play video games all day. He didn't want to think about school or after school, the walk home, none of it, but he couldn't help it. The thoughts were there, like the smell of coffee that seemed to linger in the house long after it had been brewed. Bryson chewed his lumpy oatmeal slowly, choked it down, replaying the scene. The moment that landed him there with the body on fire, the punches thrown, the kicks kicked, everyone's phones out recording. He had seen the clips all over social media the night before. Commentary, filters, memes, hashtags, Berman Street beatdown. The shaky footage of him throwing haymakers, trying not to fall. Because once you fall, it's over. Everyone knows that. Ain't no getting up. Ain't no coming back. He signed out, then signed back in, then deleted all the apps from his phone, at least for a few days. He wouldn't have. He wouldn't have been able to, but his mom made him. Made him unplug from the laughs and likes, from the catchy captions and antics from kids who barely spoke in school but had mastered saying the right things online. Matched with the perfect light and angle to turn out of this world boredom into an Oscar worthy blockbuster. And now Bryson was sitting alone in the living room, on the living room floor, trying to swallow sludgy oats and forget it all. By going to war, the television glowed, Call of Duty, Xbox powered on, headset on, controller gripped as Bryson Wills crawled into World War II. Ty Carson went to school today, and the whole time he was there, he felt like he was being watched, stared at, even though the new rumor had taken over yesterday's old one. Because rumors only last a day. But still, Ty felt like his classmates were following him. Not stalking him, peeping around corners and things like that. No, but more like looking away whenever he'd catch their eyes or cutting their conversations whenever he walked by, like he was some kind of human mute button. Made him paranoid. So paranoid, he even felt like every clock was actually a giant eye. And every time the bell rang, he imagined it was the building laughing at him. He was losing it, and wished he could make himself small, unseeable, turn himself into a speck, into a black streak swiped across the floor from a sneaker sole turn himself into a penny swept into one of the corners by Mr. Munch's big broom. But he couldn't do none of that, so he shrank mentally, tried to crawl inside himself, another thing he wished he could really do. Be like a turtle. Pull his head into the home of his body. Look around the shell. Try to figure out why he felt how he felt. Why he did what he did, which was nothing but felt like something. Yesterday. Figure out if it was wrong. It wasn't wrong, but maybe it was. He didn't know, and that was the hard part, or at least part of the hard part, about yesterday. Not just yesterday, but yesterday, too. Yesterday, when everything was fine. Yesterday, when he could just be quiet.
Ty was cool enough to be cool with everybody, because most people looked at him like a human video game. Bright, full of color and sound, awkward movements, dramatic moments. He lived in his own world, but it was a world full of windows that everyone could see into. A world full of bloops and bleeps, rooms and occasional boom. It wasn't strange to see him pretending to crawl up the lockers, or for him to perform tactical movements like barrel, barrel rolls in the middle of the hallway. The type of kid who wore his backpack on the front of his body, a chest pack, just so he could pretend it was some type of armor. And on any given day, an umbrella could become either sword or shotgun. And to top it all off, Ty was one of the best gamers around, nationally ranked, and everyone knew. He had won tournaments and competitions and had been trying to get Ms. Walkley to convince Mr. Jarrett to start a gaming league at the school. We don't need more distractions, Mr. Carson, she'd say, biting down hard on her words. Bleep, 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 bloop, Mrs. Walkley, he'd reply. He'd shake his head, she'd shake hers, and that would be that. Because everyone knew Ty's gaming skills, his classmates were always trying to convince him to play on their squads. But Ty only played with the best. Well, he was the best, so second best. And at their school, the second best was Bryson Wills, a boy whose father made him grow out his hair and instead of letting, it, letting him get it braided or cornrowed, convinced him that an afro was the best way to go. And Bryson owned it. He owned it so much that his screen name was Afro Gamer. Ty's was Ty Red which he said was pronounced tired because he was so tired of beating everyone. But most gamers thought it was Ty Red, which made sense, too, because Ty saw red whenever he was playing. All instinct, all thumbs. Bryson and Ty lived close enough to each other to get together on weekends and play. Sometimes Bryson would come to Ty's house, a small house over on Crossman, Bryson liked this because Ms. Cece, the world's best candy lady, lived at the top of Ty's street. And other times, Ty would come over to Bryson's house, a bigger house over on Berman. Ty preferred to play at Bryson's. The snacks were better, the TV was bigger, and a tiny dog named Max Payne wasn't running around barking and clawing at it. The game of choice, Call of Duty World War II, which really bothered his parents. Pac-Man, now that's a game. You just eat and run away from ghosts, which is what I like to call life, his father said, joking. Or Super Mario Brothers, his mother added. I mean, other than fighting the big bosses, you're basically just trying not to be eaten by the environment. Mushrooms and plants and turtles, his father yet. It's nothing like what you're playing. Ty tried to convince his parents Call of Duty was educational that it was basically like interactive social studies class, that there was no better way to learn about that particular war than to jump right into it. There is no way you can know war, son, Ty's mother scolded. Not unless you've fought in war, and you haven't. You're talking about Nazis. That's a lot more than some video game. Ty understood that he didn't know the kind of war he was simulating in the game, that his controller wasn't a rifle, and his raggedy family reunion t-shirt wasn't a flak jacket. His headset wasn't a helmet, and the sounds were in his ears were, in fact, just sound in his ears. But Ty also knew that there was some kind of war he was in, some kind of battle he didn't he did know but couldn't make sense of, that the other sounds in his head were more than just sounds, that they made his heart do weird things, made his stomach tighten, Ty knew the anxiety of a kind of war. He knew the adrenaline and the confusion of it all. Because yesterday, because yesterday, because yesterday. Ty had been kissed by a boy, Slim, at the water fountain after first period, P.E., on his cheek, but close enough to his mouth to count. They were fighting over the water. We were fighting over the water, right? It was weird. He was surprised, but not mad, which was more surprising. It was so weird. It wasn't that weird. It was a little weird, but not a whole lot weird. It was seen, 
by someone no one saw see it. And that someone told everyone. Everyone. And by lunch, Slim, whose real name was Salem, had twisted the story, had told everyone Ty kissed him. So when Ty walked into the cafeteria, he walked into a minefield, a war zone. Everyone locked and loaded, firing at him. Bryson had heard the rumor. It snaked around, passed from mouth to ear, a hiss whisper. It eventually came to Bryson through Remy Vaughn. If Remy didn't try to act cool, he probably would have been the coolest kid in the school. But, nope. So, Bryson shot back, slamming his locker door. So, that means he's gay. No, it don't, Bryson said annoyed. And even if it do, so what? Bryson swung his backpack onto his shoulder, watching Remy's face, trying to work out why he cared so much about Ty and Slim. So Bryson asked him, why you care so much? I don't. You do. I mean, here's a better question. How many girls have you kissed? I don't know, a bunch, Remy said, looking off. Bryson knew that was a lie, and that he hadn't kissed anyone. And Bryson didn't hold that against him, because he hadn't kissed anyone either. But he never lied about it. It was no big deal. Plus, why lie to a person you know knows the truth? Remy's best friend Candace was Bryson's cousin and she was always going on and on about how Remy was forever acting like some kind of lover boy that no one's ever loved. Right, a bunch. I guess negative numbers are still numbers, Bryson razzed. I just think it might be best to mind your business. He patted Remy on the shoulder and walked away. In the cafeteria, instead of people leaving Ty alone, instead of them cracking their stupid jokes to each other, a bunch of them had decided to sit with him, crowd around him at the lunch table, tease him to his face, including Slim. By the time Bryson got there, they were calling Ty all kinds of names. Names that bite, names that stick and mark, names that catch fire and leave a burnt smell in the air. The boys mocked him, bending their wrists as if they had just shot a basketball and were holding the follow-through. Holding holding. Yo, what's going on? Bryson asked, coming up to the table. He stood behind Ty, his hair like an eclipsed sun. Scoot over, Ty. Let me slide in. Ty inched to the left, and Bryson sat next to him, set his tray of mozzarella sticks on the table. What's everyone talking about? Uh, nothing, Slim said. Just that Ty tried to kiss me because he's gay. He said it, he said it like it was your mama joke. Like he had just chopped Ty down. Ty shook his head like it didn't matter, but Bryson could tell it did. It for sure did. Hmm, interesting, Bryson said, looking down at the fried cheese fingers on his tray. Because I heard you kissed him. He glanced at Slim. Because that's true, Ty confirmed, relieved Bryson was there, his back up just like in the game. Watch my back, cover me, cover me. That ain't true, Slim barked, looking around to make sure everyone heard him. You wouldn't kiss no boy. Hey, 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 man. Bryson put his hands up. If you did, you did. It's all good. I mean, you might want to ask permission next time instead of just sneaking it. It's a little weird, but relax. The other guys at the table didn't know if they should laugh or ooh or nod or what. They couldn't tell if Bryson was being serious or if he was joking around. You're talking like you like boys, too, Trey Larson, a fake tough guy who everyone knew got chumped by the smallest kid in the school, said to Bryson. Bryson started laughing. Am I? I think Slim is. Matter of fact, I think y'all are, Bryson pointed at all the jokesters. Like my father always says, those that scar you are you. He checked their faces, and it wasn't hard to tell that they had no idea what that meant. He looked at Ty and Ty's face looked no different. A gem dropped in the mud. The point is, I don't like boys. Not like that. But I like Ty. He patted Ty on the back. Matter of fact, I like him more than I like y'all. And for real, for real, I don't see what the big deal is. A kiss on the cheek? That's what all y'all roasting him for? A kiss on the cheek, really? Bryson looked at Slim, held his eyes there for a while, before looking at the other guys. That's it? And then, Bryson leaned over and pecked Ty on the cheek. Mwah! And all. Then put it.